In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I am greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, your Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, 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 have mercy. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light and fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. The word of the Lord. Amen. Our responsorial song. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, 
to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The word of the Lord. Jesus was to give his life as a ransom for the many. It entails what we speak about when we speak of the Eucharist and its relation to suffering. I won't recap what we discussed last week or the last year, but let us press forward. If you remember, you can see often a sign at different sporting events that says John 3 16. You probably have seen that. I know uh, I've seen it. Uh, John 3 16. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not die, but might have eternal life. I thought about that line, John 3, 16. Jesus came to die so that we would have eternal life. What is the opposite of eternal life? Eternal death. And what is eternal death? Damnation, hell, separation from God. Jesus came to bridge that chasm that began at the Garden of Eden, where by the disobedience of Adam and Eve, mankind is separated from God. We are to suffer, as you remember the punishments involved from man's expulsion from the Garden of Eden. Man would have to work, and by the sweat of his brow he would eat. Woman would now bring forth children in pain. So we can see suffering becomes part of our human condition. But suffering involves the actions of Jesus. For Jesus has to be the one to make amends to God for the offense given by humanity. And to do that, meant that he had to become incarnate in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. He was to experience every facet of human life that we experience. Did he suffer before his passion? Yes. Yes, he did. And did he seek to alleviate the sufferings that people had? Sure, yes. We can point to various passages in the gospel. One of the most famous is the healing of the paralytic, who, if you remember, they open up the roof and they lower him down in front of Jesus in front of the community. And Jesus says, my child, your sins are forgiven. And those around the Pharisees and religious leaders say, who is this that forgives sins? For only God can forgive sins. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, says, ah, to show you that the Son of Man has the power to forgive sins, I say to you, to the paralyzed man, rise, pick up your mat, and walk. And he does. So Jesus is there to alleviate the physical sufferings. We think of leprosies, blindness, muteness, the possessions, all these things that physically cause man to suffer, he himself alleviates. But of all the stories, I am sure there were other people who experience blindness and muteness and other aspects of physical suffering who never got to see Jesus during those three years of his public ministry. But he had to, therefore, offer one action, one sacrificial action that would be a means of healing and apology for everyone and not just for everyone in Judea but for everyone who always was and who will come after that moment and that is why we as Catholics hold and venerate the cross of Christ especially a crucifix with the body of Christ as a perpetual reminder of that sacrifice which freed all of us.
which opened the gates of heaven to all of us so that now we do not have to live a life with the burden of eternal death weighing on our shoulders, but yet we now have access to the inner life of the Trinity in a way so profound. And I'm sorry, I don't have the words to describe how profound it would be. But imagine. It's so profound when Jesus is resurrected and ascended into heaven at the ascension, human flesh is brought into the inner life of the Trinity. Y'all, that's what angels, they don't tread in that area. As great as the angelic creatures are, even they can never experience heaven to the degree that you and I can experience heaven because we can experience heaven as God is in heaven. And how is God in heaven? Both with human flesh and spirit. And you and I with our glorified bodies, pray God, we're in heaven, will experience heaven as he is in heaven. That is what was opened up by that sacrifice. You know, and I'll conclude, uh, I remember as a small child looking up to my mother or father and saying, how much do you love me? And they would spread their arms and say, I love you this much. And when you're a little child, like, oh, that's a big amount. But if we were to apply that to God, if we ask God, God, how much do you love us? How much are you willing to endure for us? He would say, I love you this much. And he would spread his arms from Genesis to Revelation, from the beginning of existence to the end of the world. This is how much I love you. I spread my arms for you to show you that. Always, always, that example is upon the cross. But that moment, our salvation could never be accomplished without suffering. What Jesus does is he doesn't give us an answer to why suffering happens. He gives us the meaning to understand the suffering we endure. That, as St. Paul said, I fill up what is lacking in the sufferings of the body of Christ. We are able to unite our suffering with his as a redemptive act to say to God, God, this is how much I love you by my choosing to embrace my cross today. May Almighty God be with you. May he bless you. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Coming together as one family in faith, we offer to God our prayers and our needs. For Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy, with the people entrusted to their charge, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who hold public office and those who assist them in promoting the common good, let us pray to the Lord. For those who travel by sea, land, or air, for captives and all held in prison, let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered in this sacred place by faith and devotion and by love and reverence to God, let us pray to the Lord. For all those in our community, both here, present, and those watching on video, who are suffering, whether from physical, emotional, or mental illnesses, that they may be comforted by the resurrected Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. For all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, joined through the intercession of St. Thomas the Apostle, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray this night for Deacon Charlie and Margaret Groves, for whom this Mass will be offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude by asking Mary for her intercession as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who will become our spiritual drink. Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of His name. For our good and good of all His Church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the powers and hosts of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me. Celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. 
we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and
Communion for us to be found, page 115 of Miss Behold, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, who hope in his merciful love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age 
and prepare it for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Prayer.